Welcome to week three, guys. So this week, I want you to focus on a word we call santosha, which is contentment. Contentment with where you are in your practice. So it's week three, we're starting to build a little bit of strength and flexibility. So this week we're breaking down downward facing dog. You've all heard of downward facing dog and it is, it is the queen of all of the, the yoga poses. It builds strength and stability through the spine, length and flexibility through the back of the body. Um, after the practice, you'll feel stronger, you'll feel more subtle. So let's get into week three. Namaste. Coming to your reclined easy pose, laying lengthways along your pillow or your bolster. You can lay flat on the floor if you don't have a pillow, or if the pillow is uncomfortable in the lower back, just lay flat on the floor. Bending the knees and crossing your legs together, allowing your feet to fall to the side. Bring your hands to the shoulder width apart. Close your eyes. Let your shoulders to relax. Feel the whole body soften. Notice how you're feeling. Are you feeling anxious or nervous? Relaxed? Excited? Just notice without judging. Notice how the body's feeling. sore or tired or is it energetic and bring your awareness into your chest feel your chest opening up you relax the shoulders and then feel the breath coming into the chest notice the breath becoming a little bit slower a little bit deeper without forcing it you might notice the rise and the fall of your chest you breathe deep down into your belly relax your face soften your hips Feeling that life force of your breath entering into your body. In yoga we call it prana, or pranayama, that life energy. It's literally sends life to every cell of your body. Watch that life force as it enters into your chest, into your belly. Watch it leave your body as you exhale completely and soften down towards the floor. Feel a complete surrender. Being aware of your breath, making your way up to sitting. Removing any props. And come back to being on your knees with the toes touching, knees apart. Sit back onto your heels. If you need to, you can use your your cushion underneath your bum if you have knee issues or hip issues tuck the tailbone down towards your heels reach out with your hands and feel the spine pulling up out of the torso you're lengthening from the tailbone right through the crown of the head feel a pulling from your pelvic floor feel like you're pulling your torso up out of your pelvic bowl so although we're resting, we're grounded, there's still this activation. It's a balance between steadiness and ease in every pose that we do. 
come to your breath. Notice that beautiful, big, deep breath, breathing down into the bottom of the lungs. And as you exhale, empty your lungs completely and sink down into the mat. Completely let go. Soften. Use your breath to find your truth. From your child's pose, tuck your toes into the floor, straighten your legs and push back into downward facing dog. Your hands, hand width apart, hands are shoulder width apart, lengthen through the torso, feet are hip width apart, bend your knees a little bit, a slight little bend in the knees so that you can keep length through the spine, tuck your chin so that you're looking up towards your belly button. Feel the spine pulling out of the hips as you push your bum back towards the back corner of the room. Feel your inner thighs pull back towards the back corner of the room. When you're ready, come down back to your child's pose. Rest back onto your heels. Breathe into your child's pose. Take as much time as you need here to breathe. Come back to your breath. You're only doing yoga if you're breathing. Tuck your toes, push back to downward facing dog. Have a look down at the hands. Fingertips are spread wide. Middle fingers are facing forward. Squeeze the hands or the forearms towards each other as you widen through the collarbone. Feel your torso again pulling out of your pelvis as you pull your belly in and create a concave in your belly to lengthen your back. Tuck your chin and look up towards your belly button. Activate the legs and slowly Push your heels down towards the mat. You can keep the bend in the legs to protect your back. And when you're ready, come back down to your child's pose. Soften down, sit back onto your heels, extend through the spine, slight, still, still some slight activation from the pelvic floor, lengthening the torso, hands and shoulder width apart, tuck the toes back into your mat, downward facing dog. Push the bum back towards the back corner of the room, lengthen. From your downward facing dog, walk your feet forward one foot at a time. Nice and slow to hang forward in a forward fold. Drop the head down towards the floor, bend the knees to protect the spine. Nice work. Breathe in to lengthen and breathe out to soften. Rest the crown of the head down towards the floor. You can shake your head a few times, yes or no, and really relax into your neck. Feel the breath coming into the back of the body. And close your eyes. Just notice the beauty in the simplicity. It's a slight little inversion. So there's fresh oxygenated blood flowing down towards your brain. Back of the body's opening up, calming your nervous system. Still feel that little lift through the pelvic floor. Now pull into your belly button and slowly roll up, coming up one vertebrae at a time. You can release your arms. Noticing what muscles you need to stack your vertebrae on top of each other. The shoulders and the neck come up last. Just stand tall in your Tadasana. Activate the arms. Tucking your toe bone, lengthening through the waist. Keep that activation as you're pulling into your belly. Inhale, reach the hands towards the sky. Let's interlace the fingers, point the hands towards the sky. Reach right up all the way from the heels right through to the fingertips. Keep pulling in towards the belly. Keep breathing. And then bringing the hands down by the side. Stepping out into your wide leg stance. Have a look down at the feet, inner edges of the feet are parallel, turn your right foot towards the edge of your mat. Straighten the legs, squeeze the legs towards each other, look over the front fingers and reach forward, windmill the arms down into your trikonasana, your triangle pose. Feel that left thigh bone externally rotating as it's active. 
As far as you're folding forward, that right thigh bone is pulling up into the hips as you extend the torso out of the hips. Inhale, come back to standing. Bring the hands down behind you. Squeeze the legs towards each other. Face your shoulders and your hips to the side of your mat. Bending the front knee, coming down into your warrior two. Again, make sure the knee doesn't travel past that ankle. Feel that you're lifting through the arch of that foot and externally rotating the thigh. So externally rotating it this way to open the hips. The warriors are strong poses, but they're also hip openers. Push down through the outer edge of that back foot. Squeeze the legs toward each other. Stand back up nice and straight. We're building strength as you stand back up nice and straight. Extend the front leg. So inhale, lengthening through the torso. Exhale, bending the knee again, coming back down to your warrior two. Keep that thigh bone rotating out. Keep lifting through the arches of the feet and now we can add the arms into it. Let's bring the arms out. Nice soft eye gaze over the front fingers. Reach the fingertips to the opposite sides of the world and then soften the shoulders. That's it. Maybe bring your torso back a little bit over your hips for some people. Pull your belly in and tuck your tailbone. Find that length. Find that breath. Reach forward with the fingertips. Come down to your side angle. Lean back into the pose. Beautiful work. Inhale, come back to standing. Bring the foot back towards the side of the mat. Step or face the other left, the other foot back out to the left. Squeeze the legs towards each other. Lengthen. Nice soft eye gaze over the front fingers. Reach forward with those fingertips and windmill the arms down so that you come down into your triangle pose. Look up towards the top hands, rotate the torso so the right shoulder opens up and you open up your chest. Lengthen through both legs, squeeze that left thigh bone in, pull out through the torso, inhale, engage through the core, come back to standing. Bring the hands down behind you, give them a break. Squeeze the legs together, lift through the arch of the feet, bend that front knee, coming into your warrior two. Feel that beautiful big opening through the hips as you're strengthening the legs. Push down through the outer edge of your back foot. So feel like you're pushing the outer edge of your foot down into the wall or another person's foot behind you. It'll create strength. you notice this lifting through the arches of your feet. Feel that thigh bone pulling into the hips and feel the front thigh bone pulling into the hips. The chest and the shoulders are opening to the side of the room and your eye gaze can come out over that left shoulder. Inhale, straighten the leg back up. Exhale, bend down, keeping the strength, lifting through the arches of the feet and rolling that thigh bone out to protect your knee. You can bring the arms back into it, bring the arms back out. Reach them to the opposite sides of the world. Soften the shoulders. Nice eye gaze down over those fingertips. Tuck the tailbone, lengthen. Reach forward with the fingertips, coming down to your side angle. Keep rolling that right thigh bone out to the right. Pull the left thigh bone into the hips as you extend through the waist. Inhale, come back to standing. Straighten the front leg, step forward, back to your mountain pose. Coming back into your Tadasana, your mountain pose, standing nice and tall and then making your way down to the mat. Onto your knees for ready for gate pose. If you need a cushion for your knees, grab a cushion. So this one, we have the knee underneath the hip. We will extend the right leg out to the right, flex that right foot so it comes back toward you, engage the thigh, maybe poke your thigh to see if it's engaged. Nice activation. Reach the hands out towards the side. Lengthen through both sides of the waist. Let's bring the right hand down to the knee. Slide it down as we reach the left hand up and over. Finding length through the long side of the body. Inhale, come back to your knees. Swapping the legs over. Using whatever support you need under that knee. Straighten the leg back out. Flex the foot. 
squeeze the thigh bone back towards you, reach with that left hand down to the knee or the shin, and reach the right hand up and over to the opposite side, lengthening all the way from the thigh, the hips, the side waist, into the ribs. Inhale, come back to standing. Standing back at the front of your mat in your Tadasana, your mountain pose. Standing nice and tall. Find your length. Bring the hands behind you to grab a hold of the forearms. Ready for our extended side stretch. Bring the foot back towards you. Squeeze the legs towards each other. Lift your chest towards the sky. Exhale, folding forward, folding at the hips, coming down towards the mat. Feel that beautiful big stretch in that front leg. Thigh bone pulling in, waist pulling out. Inhale, come back to standing. Stand back to your mountain pose. Stand nice and tall, opposite foot. Squeeze the legs together. Lift the chest towards the sky. Beautiful big back bend, look up. And then folding forward, folding at the hips. Keep the spine nice and long. Keep that right thigh bone pulling into you. you look down towards your toes. Nice big stretch for that right hamstring. Inhale, come back to standing. Stepping back towards your mountain pose. Standing nice and tall in your mountain pose. So from your Tadasana, stepping out to your wide leg stance. Hands to your hips. Have a look down at the feet. Inside edges of your feet parallel. Inhale, lift your chest towards the sky. Exhale, folding forward, folding at the hips. Breathing here, lengthening. We're going to stay here for a little while. If you feel like you need some support, you can grab your pillows and you can place your hands down onto the cushion. Extend your arms to lengthen. Inhale. And then as you exhale, you may want to bend your elbows, softening down into the pose. You can tuck your chin slightly. Beautiful. Squeeze the legs towards each other. Activate through the legs. Squeeze the legs up into towards the hips and feel that belly pulling in nice and tight so you're extending through the spine. You can drop your head down towards the floor. Squeeze the legs together, activate through the core, standing back up nice and tall. Making your way back to your Tadasana, your mountain pose. So from your mountain pose, making your way down into a cross-legged sitting position. So you're sitting on your mat, cross-legged. So as you can face to the side, nice work. So sitting nice and tall, notice how Susie's got her back nice and straight. If you feel like your back is rounding, maybe sit up on a cushion as an option. And that will take any bend out of the back. So crossing the legs to have you feel comfortable. Sitting nice and tall, making sure you take that arch out of the lower back. And that will allow your energy to flow more freely. So improving your posture, increasing your energy, standing up nice and tall. Let's bring the hands up overhead. Interlace the fingers, keep reaching nice and tall out of the pelvic bowl from your pelvis, reaching right up towards the roof, growing longer. As you exhale, bring the hands down towards the floor. Turn the right hand, face the right palm out towards the side of the room. Face the right palm out towards the side of the room. Inhale that hand up, bend the elbow, and reach that hand down your back. Sitting up nice and tall still. Back the left hand, thumb faces down towards the floor. Reach it out and then bring the arm down and around to grab a hold of the top hand. If it doesn't reach the top hand, it doesn't matter. Grabbing a hold of the fingers, lengthening. If you're not grabbing, if you can't grab the fingers, then just grab your shirt. If you can't reach your fingers, just hold on to your shirt. So opposite side, let's release the hands. Let's turn our back so everyone can see us. So sitting nice and tall, taking any arch out of the lower back. If you need to sit up on something, sit up on something. 
Place your right palm towards the side of the room. Reach the hand up towards the sky and bring that palm down the back so the fingers are facing down towards the floor. With your left arm, reach it out, face the thumb down towards the floor and reach that hand behind you, bend the elbow towards the top hand. See if you can interlace your fingers or grab your fingers together. If you can't, just grab a hold of your shirt. Just grab a hold of your shirt there for me, Susie. All right, reaching the hands back up, let's windmill the arms the opposite direction. Nice work. Breathing into the pose. Try not to put pressure on your neck. Bring the arms back a little bit, bring the chin back, and breathe into the pose. Release the hands, windmill the arms out, sitting back, nice and tall, finding your breath. Now moving from your sitting pose to your staff pose. So in your staff, flex your feet, feel like your thighs are pulling back in towards your hips. If it's tight on the hamstrings, maybe bend your knees a little bit or sit up on a cushion. Pull the belly right in towards the spine and feel like you're emptying out the pelvic bowl. Feel that space behind the pelvis. Feel the space behind the pelvic bone. Lift up towards the crown of the head. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, soften the shoulders. Tuck the chin to look down towards your toes. Nice and strong in your staff pose and steady, find your breath. Inhale, reach your hands up towards the sky. Keep the belly pulled in, tuck that belly back in, that's it. Bring the hands down by the side. Inhale, reach the hands up. Exhale, reach the sternum forward towards the knees as you fold forward. Keep the belly pulling in to create space as you fold forward. Take your awareness inward and create space from your pelvic floor. Feel like you're pulling your organs out of the way as you reach forward. I feel a nice stretch through the hamstrings. If you feel like that you're putting pressure in the lower back, maybe just come back out of a little bit and focus on lengthening the spine, leading with the sternum. So lead with your heart rather than your head. Find your breath. You can close your eyes. Find your center. It's so important how far you fall forward. Find the truthfulness in your breath. Preparing for our final pose, making your way down to your savasana, laying back down to the mat. Lay your palms to face the sky, feet to fall out to the side. Take a nice deep breath in, a big sigh out the mouth. Allow yourself to completely let go. Feel as if your body is melting down through the mat. Completely softening. Relax your feet, toes. Soften your calves and your thighs. Relax your glutes. Your hips. See the abdominals relax, lower back, chest and the upper back. Soften your fingers and your hands, forearms, upper arms, relax your shoulders. Feel your neck lengthen, relax your face. And you can stay in Savasana for as long as you like. Love and gratitude. Thank you for practicing with us. Namaste.